Hello friends welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about the roots of drug administration. This is an important university topic. So let's begin. Roots of drug administration. Most drugs can be administered by a variety of routes. The choice of appropriate route in a given situation depends both on drug as well as patient related factors. Local routes these routes can only be used for localized lesions at accessible sites and for drugs whose systemic absorption from these sites is minimal or absent thus high concentrations are attained at the desired site without exposing the rest of the body systemic side effects or toxicity are consequently absent or minimal for drugs in suitable dosage forms that are absorbed from these sites routes the same can serve as systemic route of administration e.g. glycerol trinitrate gtn applied on the skin as ointment or transdermal patch for angina pectoris take topical this refers to external application of the drug to the surface for localized action it is often more convenient as well as reassuring to the patient Drugs can be efficiently delivered to the localized lesions on skin or pharyngeal nasal mucosa eyes ear canal anal canal or vagina in the form of lotion ointment cream powder rinse paints drops spray lozenges suppositories or pessaries non-absorbable drugs given orally for action on g i mucosa sucralfate vancomycin inhalation of drugs for action on bronchite salbutamol chromol and sodium and irrigating solutions jellies povidone iodine lidocaine applied to urethra are other forms of topical medication though deeper tissues certain deep areas can be approached by using a syringe and needle but the drug should be in such a form that systemic absorption is slow e.g. intraarticular injection hydrocortisin acetate in knee joint infiltrate in around a nerve or intrathecal injection lidocaine retrobulbar injection hydrocortisin acetate behind the eyeball teen arterial supply close intraarterial injection as used for contrast media in angiography anti cancer drugs can be infused in femoral or brachial artery to localize the effect for limb malignancies systemic roots the drug administered through systemic routes is intended to be absorbed into the blood stream and distributed all over including the site of action through circulation ek oral oral ingestion is the oldest and commonest mode of drug administration it is safer more convenient does not need assistance non invasive often painless the medicament need not be sterile and so is cheaper both solid dosage forms powders tablets capsules spansules druggies molded tablets gastrointestinal therapeutic systems gets and liquid dosage forms elixirs syrups emulsions mixtures can be given orally limitations of oral route of administration action of drugs is slower and thus not suitable for emergencies unpalatable drugs chloramphenicol are difficult to administer drug may be filled in capsules to circumvent this may cause nausea and vomiting cannot be used for uncooperative unconscious vomiting patient absorption of the drug may be variable and erratic certain drugs are not absorbed streptomycin others are destroyed by digestive juices penicillin g insulin or in liver gtn testosterone lidocaine though sublingual s l or buckle the tablet or pellet containing the drug is placed under the tongue or crushed in the mouth and spread over the buccal mucosa only lipid soluble and non irritating drugs can be so administered absorption is relatively rapid action can be prod sudden minutes though it is somewhat inconvenient one can speed the drug after the desired effect has been obtained The chief advantage is that liver is bypassed and drugs with high first pass metabolism can be absorbed directly into systemic circulation. Drugs given sublingually are GTN, buprenorphine, desamino oxytocin. Teen, rectal certain irritant and unpleasant drugs can be put into rectum as suppositories or retention enema for systemic effect. This route can also be used when the patient is having recurrent vomiting or is unconscious. However, it is rather inconvenient and embarrassing. Absorption is slower, irregular and often unpredictable. The diazepam solution and paracetamol suppository are rapidly and dependably absorbed from the rectum in children. 
Drug absorbed into external hemorrhoidal veins, about 50%, bypasses liver, but not that absorbed into internal hemorrhoidal veins. Rectal inflammation can result from irritant drugs. Diazepam, andomethacin, paracetamol, ergotamin and few other drugs are sometimes given rectally. Char. Cutaneous highly lipid soluble drugs can be applied over the skin for slow and prolonged absorption. The liver is also bypassed. The drug can be incorporated in an ointment and applied over specified area of skin. Absorption of the drug can be enhanced by rubbing the preparation, by using an oily base and by an occlusive dressing. Punch. Inhalation volatile liquids and gases are given by inhalation for systemic action, e.g. general anesthetics. Absorption takes place from the vast surface of alveoli, action is very rapid. When administered TN is discontinued, the drug diffuses back and is rapidly eliminated in expired air. Thus, control-led administration is possible with moment-to-moment -moment adjustment. Irritant vapors, ether, cause inflammation of respiratory tract and increase secretion. Che. Nasal, the mucous membrane of the nose can readily absorb many drugs. Digestive juices and liver are bypassed. However, only certain drugs like GNIH agonists, calcitonin and desmopressin applied as a spray or nebulized solution have been used by this route. This route is being tried for some other peptide drugs like insulin, as well as to bypass the blood-brain barrier. Sat. Parenteral part, beyond, enteral, intestinal. Conventionally, parenteral refers to administration by injection which takes the drug directly into the tissue fluid or blood without having to cross the enteral mucosa. The limitations of oral administration are circumvented. Drug action is faster and surer, valuable in emergencies. Gastric irritation and vomiting are not provoked. Parenteral routes can be employed even in unconscious, uncooperative or vomiting patient. There are no chances of interference by food or digest type juices. Liver is bypassed. Disadvantages of parenteral routes are, the preparation has to be sterilized and is costlier, the technique is invasive and painful, assistance of another person is mostly needed, though self-injection is possible, e.g. insulin by diabetics, there are chances of local tissue injury and, in general, parenteral route is more risky than oral. The important parenteral routes are, I subcutaneous, S, C. The drug is deposited in the loose subcutaneous tissue which is richly supplied by nerves. Irritant drugs cannot be injected but as less vascular absorption is slower than intramuscular. Only small volumes can be injected as C. Self-injection is possible because deep penetration is not needed. This route should be avoided in shock patients who are so constricted absorption will be delayed. E. Intramuscular I. M. The drug is injected in one of the large skeletal muscles, deltoid, triceps, gluteus maximus, rectus femoris, etc. Muscle is less richly supplied with sensory nerves, mild irritants can be injected, and as more vascular absorption of drugs in aqueous solution is faster. It is less painful, but self-injection is often impracticable because deep penetration is needed. Depot preparations, oily solutions, aqueous suspense science can be injected by this route. Intramuscular injections should be avoided in anticoagulant treated patients because it can produce local hematoma. E. Intravenous, I. V. The drug is injected as a bolus creek, bolus lum, or infused slowly over hours in one of the superficial veins. The drug reaches directly into the bloodstream and effects are produced immediately great value in emergency. The intima of veins is insensitive and drug gets diluted with blood. Therefore, even highly irritant drugs can be injected I, V, but hazards are thrombophlebitis of the injected vein and necrosis of adjoining tissues if extravasation occurs. These complications can be minimized by diluting the drug or injecting it into a running I, V, line. Only aqueous solutions, not suspensions, because drug particles can cause embolism, are to be injected I, V, and there are no depot preparations for this route. Chances of causing air embolism is another risk. The dose of the drug required is smallest, bioavailability is 100%, and even large volumes can be infused. 
One big advantage with this route is, in case response is accurately measurable, e.g. BP and the drug shot acting, e.g. sodium nitroprusside titration of the dose with the response is possible. However, this is the most risky route, vital organs like heart, brain, etc. get exposed to high concentrations of the drug. If intradermal injection the drug is injected into the skin raising a bleb, e.g. BCG vaccine, sensitivity testing, or scarring, multiple puncture of the epidermis through a drop of the drug is done. This route is employed for specific purposes only. Like, share and subscribe for new videos. Thank you.